ladies and gentlemen, to episode number 53 of Let's Go Racing with David Stark. I'm Edward Jones, and we're so glad to have you with us. We are getting you ready for the Daytona 500 as we are gearing up for what we're calling the best week ever around here at Studio Soapbox as we'll be on the road throughout the next few days as David's in Charlotte right now and we'll be joining him in Daytona Beach on Thursday and be bringing you a live show on Thursday as well as Saturday after the Xfinity race and we kick off our coverage leading into Speed Weeks right now here on Let's Go Racing as David Starr joins us. David, it is the best time of the year. We already had the Bush Clash. What an exciting show that was as Joey Logano was able to bring that home and NASCAR pulled off uh, one of the unthinkable events that just a few months ago we didn't even know was imaginable. Oh, man, just amazing. You know, that was, God, I'm, I'm just like most of the other fans. I was just like, glued to the television on the edge of my seat, you know, it was so exciting. And uh, what a historical event, uh, you know, I'm proud of the sport that we love and that we work in because I thought, I thought they just did a great job. The cup drivers were awesome. It was exciting, but man, uh, Tyler, like you said, man, it, Daytona is almost here and Hey guys, believe it or not, <laughs> I'm here in Charlotte and uh, you know, what, what is today? It's uh, Thursday evening and uh i hope to announce my deal next monday or tuesday next week so we all know what's going on you know so uh but man it's always an exciting time to kick off you know all the all the racing you know to kick off the 2020 you know nascar uh season and then everybody's racing season so uh it's exciting times for us yeah no doubt about it dominic Oregon of the racing experts.com is here as well dom what'd you make of the clash Man, I loved watching that. It was a great event. I think it exceeded my expectations and seeing some of the heat races and watching flag to flag coverage of the, the main race, the, the A main, 23 cars. Man, I think what still got to me most, too, what a gnarly hit Justin Haley took on that infield wall on that jersey barrier. That tore up the car at 70 miles an hour. And man, it was a crazy crash and, you know, something to think ponder. But at the same time, the racing was great. And Kyle Bush and Joey Logano going at it neck and neck, toe to toe. Great things to take away from that race. So let's start out with that clash and dive into it in depth here. The, the racing that we saw, you know, I, I was watching a video just today that Fox Sports put out asking all the drivers about the next-gen car and how you would describe it. And basically, the, the, ba the best thing I heard was that the old cars had such old technology in them that they were – you know, cars from the 60s and the 70s that we were just putting new parts on and just keeping them going and going and going. The technology was not there. This is finally a modern race car. But the racing on Sunday looked like the same of the old car. And that's not a bad thing. At the end of the next-gen era, that was the best racing we had seen of the next-gen car. And so for me, David, I was watching that race Sunday, I'm like, this racing doesn't look any different, but it was better for the drivers, you know, and, and we saw more parity. Guys like Justin Haley, Tyler Reddick, uh, others running up front, typical names we don't talk about here. Uh, I, I would say that the next-gen car's debut was a success. I like what I saw, and, and part of it because it didn't change a whole lot, it felt like for me, compared to what was the success of the uh, previous car. Man, Tyler, you brought up a good point, you know, and 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 one of the things, the parody, uh, how it's how it's brought uh, the racing closer together. Meaning, uh, you know, I was looking at Rick Ware's son, Cody Ware, did an awesome job, mm -hmm. ran an awesome last chance race, was very competitive, almost transferred into the main event, uh, and it says a lot about the parody and how how it's kind of closing the gap from the guys that run in the middle of the pack or in the back of the pack, how it's bringing this next-gen car is bringing everybody together, and the racing was incredible. You know, one of the things uh, that comes to mind when I watched the race Sunday, which, you know, the racing was incredible. It was awesome. and uh, But just the cost of what it's going to cost to fix these next-gen cars uh, being in Charlotte the last two or three days and 
talking to some of these cup owners, you know, there's a there's a concern about the cost of the repairs on this new next gen car. But uh, Tyler, you brought up a good point: the the technology in the race cars uh, compared to uh, the uh, the cars we ran last year and the old technology we've been using in NASCAR for you know 40, 50 years. Uh, you know, it is exciting. But uh, but anyway, it, it'll be a a fun year uh i think the year will be uh full with challenges on the cup side with uh, the new next gen car but man i think at the end of the day and you said it spot on the racing didn't change it was exciting it was uh you know it was beating and banging and uh the product is still the same it's still a great race and that's that's wonderful yeah yeah i i think so uh and you know, looking at that class race, Dom, I think for NASCAR, one of their biggest wins was the fact that, you know, it went as well as it really could have on a short track when it came damage-wise. Yes, you had that nasty crash that, that Justin Haley went through. There were some mechanical failures like Tyler Reddick and Kurt Busch and Denny Hamlin saw, but with the shortage of cars and – you know, car supplies with this supply chain shortage that we're seeing right now. We saw question marks for the last couple of weeks if there was going to be even enough cars to get through Daytona. And the, the clash realistically went as well as it, it could have in terms of ava availability to get through speed weeks, I think. We didn't see it. You're right. We didn't see a big wreck fest. I think like a lot of people are anticipating even how some of the drivers were as well, too. But yes, the teams, most of these drivers came through unscathed. You're right. I think even Tyler Reddick said it best. He was bummed because he had led 51 of the first 53 laps, whatever it was. He'd led a majority of the opening part of the race. And he said, well, if we're going to have a mechanical failure, we'd rather have it now instead of the Daytona 500 or a points of warning race. But yes. And I think the other thing to look to it too is in 1997, NASCAR and Daytona started working out their program where the race winning car for the Daytona 500 would be on display at the Daytona USA Museum and gift store. That's not going to happen this year. That's, that's only going to be this year that we're not going to see that. But that tells you how short of cars that these teams are, that they need everything that they need for the next upcoming races. Yeah, they're going to do like a 3D printing type thing where they're going to be able to copy it, confetti and all, and put it on another model car uh, that will be in Daytona USA instead of the actual race car that we see. So uh, that'll be different uh, on that front. The winner of the race was Joey Logano, and uh, Joey Logano won the dirt race at Bristol last year. And so with those two things coming to mind, David, I have to think – Joey's figuring out the, the adapting on the fly thing pretty good. I mean, between running on dirt, winning that race at Bristol, then winning this first race, the next gen car on, uh, on, you know, at the uh, Coliseum there. I think that might be a sneaky good pick for the championship. Maybe a guy that's not named Kyle Larson or Kyle Busch or Chase Elliott. Maybe Joey Logano uh, is going to have a big year. Well, you can't ever count out Roger Penske, you know, and or, or Joey Logano. I mean, man, that Penske organization, just, you know, their IndyCar racing program, everything Roger Penske's involved in, you know, you say Roger Penske or Penske, you know, what, came, what comes to my mind is winners, champions, you know, and, uh, and, you know, everybody that competes in the NASCAR Cup Series, Joey Logano to everybody, they're all champions. They're all good. The best racers in the world. But, but yeah, Tyler, I agree with you. Uh, seeing what Joey Logano did at the dirt race at the Bristol Motor Speedway, seeing what Joey Logano did uh, at the awesome event there in California last weekend at the L.A. Coliseum, uh, you got to put him as one of the favorites to contend for that championship, you know, and uh, – and, uh, man, he is, he is uh, you know, whatever NASCAR, you know, whatever dirt or, you know, the L.A. Coliseum or, or whatever, you know, Joey Logano is stepping up to the plate. Kyle Busch is stepping up to the plate. And, uh, you know, there's, there's six, seven, eight guys that can win the championship, you know, and uh, <clears throat> it just makes it where it's going to be another exciting NASCAR season, you know what I mean? And uh, pretty excited about all of it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think you, you make a, 
a good point there on that front. Uh, as far as the clash going forward, guys, NASCAR has a two-year option where they can go back to the Coliseum for another two years. But there's already rumblings about potentially going to other stadiums across the U.S. from maybe even going international. Uh, we know about you know the the history, the Xfinity and the Truck Series in Canada and Mexico, but Cup has never left the U.S. for a points race. They did go to Tokyo a couple years back for some exhibition runs. But uh, Dominic, what do you think about that idea, the uh, future of the clash? Uh, do you like it uh, at the Coliseum? Do uh, you want to see it stay there for a while or maybe try some other places here? Yeah, you know, I think we could give the clash a couple of years and see how that goes. I, I think NASCAR's run one points awarding race outside of the country, and that was in the 50s. I believe it was in Canada. But outside of that, yeah, the Cup Series has never left the U.S., run a points race. They've run Japan. They've run Australia. They've run in Mexico with the Xfinity Series. They've run trucks in Canada, same as the Xfinity Series there, too. It would be nice to see NASCAR have that international reach and NASCAR having the popularity it is. And we know it's on the upswing, as we've seen the last few years. The ratings certainly backed that up from Sunday and the race for the clash. It would be cool to see NASCAR have some sort of international reach. Where they would go? Hey, what about Wembley Stadium in England? Right. Um, you know, in, in Wembley would actually be a, a bit bigger than the Coliseum, uh, that soccer field and such. I don't know how much NASCAR there, appeal there is in Europe, uh, per se, but David, where would you like to see, uh, potentially the clash or, or maybe some other races go? Where, where's an idea to possibly look around for, for NASCAR beyond uh, the Coliseum after this experiment that worked here? Well, man, this was a great experience and, and, uh, man, NASCAR, I mean, I, amazing job uh and you know i heard and y'all might have heard the same thing they said they were gonna they were gonna plow the track up you know and it's like man they built a beautiful racetrack that they're gonna plow up so it wasn't you know cheap. The, it wasn't cheap the investment to you know put a racetrack in the la coliseum i mean like you said it wasn't cheap but man the the, the enthusiasm the fan base the new fans that were watching and you know what guys it was it was unbelievable the racing was great the crowd was incredible uh uh the energy was good but you know what was cool was the super bowl is going to be right there coming up in three days and uh you know i i feel like the whole world because of all the national, you know, the, the media from all over the world was in California and L, at, in L.A. going to cover the Super Bowl for that Super Bowl week. And I feel like that NASCAR, you know, running the race there in, in, in the L.A. Coliseum, that our sport was exposed to the whole world again because there was media from all over. But I like what y'all are saying because if you can build a racetrack in the L.A. Coliseum and put on – put on a great show then why can't you go to another cool uh part of the united states in a different environment stadium arena and and showcase our sport some other great market in the country or like you guys are saying go internationally you know what i mean and uh so i really think that nascar's you know i'm sure they're they're studying it they're looking at the data and, uh, you know, I think it'll be big news when they announce that, hey, you know, we're going to go to France or, hey, we're going to go, you know, to another great uh, football stadium or stadium in the United States somewhere. But I don't think uh, I think they're kind of studying what the next step is. And, man, what a brilliant way to to showcase our sport with the with the class, you know, so I don't think that we'll see the class back at Daytona for a while. You know, I think it's a cool way to, you know, to show the world or show different parts of the country what our sport can do. Uh, if you can go into another cool football stadium, what about going into, uh, you know, Lambeau Field, <laughs> you know, and building a right. racetrack with the Green Bay Packers play? I mean, you know, just something off the wall crazy. But, man, this this worked good. And the attention that our sport got was just off the charts. Everything about it was a win-win. And I don't think NASCAR has made up their mind. I think I heard Dominic say that there's a two-year extension if they want to race there next year. But, 
you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they said, hey, we're going to France or going to England or going somewhere else to try this. And yeah, I, think I heard uh, one idea. possibility mentioned was uh, the big house at uh, University of Michigan. I mean, that place is massive. And I mean, it'd be a little cold this time of year, but I mean, yeah. that would be something. No, no doubt about it. I just, uh, you know, the excitement there knowing that you know, throughout the year that NASCAR is going to come out and say, hey, in 2023, we're taking the Bush Clash and we're going to do this, what we did in, at the L.A. Coliseum, you know, we're going to do it here, you know, and, and you know, and, and we don't know. It's a mystery right now. We could be going back to L.A. And, and maybe we could be going back to L.A., the L.A. Coliseum, but not only with the NASCAR Cup Series, but we could be going back with the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series and also the Xfinity Series. We next year we're going to have all three of our national NASCAR series there at the LA Coliseum. So you know the excitement and the enthusiasm around what's going to take place a year from now is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean uh, Dominic, I think too. You know, this was an exhibition. No points were on the line. Um, why not some more exhibition races of some sorts? You know, if you know, I, I didn't think you needed to take the clash away from Daytona. I thought you could have just created another event uh, for this, you know, and, and, and carried it on. To me, that was what I, I found different with the clash having so much history and tradition with the poll winners and such. Um, you know, I, I, I love what they did. I'd rather have that than be at Daytona given the choice, but I thought they could have had another exhibition race. You know, you look at now the now SMI has got pressure on themselves to put on a heck of a show for the all-star race with what NASCAR and what Fox did, what they invested here. I think SMI has got some pressure on themselves to live up to what the clash did and the promotion and such too. I mean, you know, one, one idea, you know, as far as the Super Bowl thing goes, you could, if you're still, if you're going to do this the week before the Super Bowl each year going forward, Next year, the Super Bowl is going to be in uh, Glendale, Arizona, you know, outside of Phoenix at State Farm Stadium. Maybe you do like a street race in Phoenix or something. Uh, the next year, the Super Bowl is in Vegas after that, then New Orleans. I mean, whether it's finding a venue or, you know, doing a street race or something, I mean, that could be your thing. Is if, if it worked this way with the Super Bowl attention, maybe that's your, your path going forward is to follow the Super Bowl, maybe. That's a good idea, Tyler. I was talking with one of our reporters, Jonathan Field, about this after the clash, and he and I were talking about how much of a success this race had to have been for NASCAR. And one idea he brought up, and I'm curious what you all think about it, what, and it kind of builds on this idea of following the NFL, like doing a stadium tour, doing some sort of stadium-exclusive tour where there's exhi exhibition races, or maybe there's, it's even its own standalone series where NASCAR does like a stadium tour four to six races a year and just goes and tries different venues and tries different places every single year. And that could be your weeknight racing. You know, your Thursday night thunder could come back that way. Maybe a summer series, like picking out six Thursday nights or something or, or Wednesday nights. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities here, David. Yeah, but, you know, just listening to y'all talk, uh, you know, you got to understand that, man, building a racetrack inside the L.A. Coliseum, that was a huge investment, you know what I mean? So, you know, uh, I, I think, Tyler, you might be on to something when you talk about maybe at uh, the Super Bowl is in New Orleans, finding a football stadium or some type of venue uh, that you could create a short track in. And, and you know, and kind of you're following your, your, your uh, showcasing our, our sport a week before the Super Bowl where the, everybody in the world, the media all over the world is there. Uh, you know, it was kind of interesting to hear you talk about that. I never even thought about it. Uh, but, you know, there's all kinds of possibilities, you know. But but to think that maybe we could, uh, that the sport could, uh, you know, maybe have another racetrack and another stadium during the year. I think the financial side of it, you know, I think it's, it's a huge, huge investment. And I don't know if we'll see that, my opinion. But, but I kind of, uh, I'm kind of really intrigued with how, you know, there's so much at stake in 2022. There's so much things are going to happen. It's going to be exciting racing for uh, the next 12 months. But, man, a year from now, you know, knowing – I can't wait to hear what NASCAR announces. Are we going back to the L.A. Coliseum? 
is the Xfinity Series going back? The truck's going back, you know. Where where is that class going to be next year? You know, it's 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 uh it's got everybody kind of on pins and needles waiting to hear. You know, what what what's NASCAR? There's no telling what NASCAR is going to do. And, and you know, you said something, Tyler, about you know the SMI tracks, other uh, race tracks maybe being uh, what what did you call it? Uh, so they got pressure on them now to follow up the act that NASCAR uh, and Fox put together with this event with the all-star race now? Yeah, I'm not real sure if I would say pressure because, you know, our sport of NASCAR racing, auto racing, it takes, you know, the SMI tracks, the NASCAR tracks, it takes everybody to make NASCAR racing what it is. And I don't think it's a competition between SMI and NASCAR because it's we're all one big family. Uh, I just think it's kind of, you know, I think it's kind of cool that NASCAR showcased, showcased our sport to the world in the L.A. Coliseum. And I think we all benefit from that, uh, you know. So I, I, I kind of disagree with the pressure of SMI tracks and other tracks. I just think it, it, it really uh, brings a lot more eyeballs to our sport, which, in, 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 you know, which makes it better for everyone, the racetracks, the the sponsors, the drivers, the crew members, everybody involved, the media, the TV exposure, you know. So, but I, I am excited to hear what next year's class is going to be, you know what I mean, after seeing what we saw in L.A., you know. And, and hey, they just might come back and say, hey, you know, we're going to do this next two years and then maybe extend it if, they, if there's a contract for them to, you know. Yeah, yeah, maybe so, maybe so, so. Uh, definitely was a lot of fun. So now as we transition to Speed Weeks at Daytona, a different looking Speed Weeks this year as it's a little more condensed with qualifying not occurring on Sunday like we typically see. It's being pushed to Wednesday. They'll run the duels the very next day. You don't have the clash at Daytona. David, uh, tell us about that. Uh, for teams, this can be a bit of an adjustment from a typical Speed Weeks Uh a shortened up version. I mean, we're used to seeing people camp out for the whole week and, you know, just enjoying the whole time. Now it's uh, a little bit shorter than it was. And the teams don't have as much track time at Daytona as what they're used to. Yeah. And it's interesting. You know, a lot of, a lot of my friends from Mississippi, Larry Davis or Don Hamby or, or Doyle Thomas, a bunch of them from Texas and different parts of the country, you know, they, they load up their motorhomes and man, they're off to Daytona, uh, you know, during the week, this week, they would already be, getting there and setting up for the for the bush class Sunday and, and you know or the bush class would be Saturday night and qualifying Sunday and, and uh, you know like you said they condensed it and uh, a lot of a lot of the fans that spend 10 days there in Daytona a lot of time there you know they're a little disappointed that the racing really don't start for, I think cup practice is Tuesday and, and uh, you know so it's a little bit different from our our, our, our very passionate fans that attend Daytona for years. Uh, it's a little bit of a change for the fans. Uh, but, you know, it's also a big change for the racing teams. You know, having the next-gen car uh, debuted not only at the LA Coliseum last week, but, you know, seeing the cars uh, for the first time in competition on a super speedway at Daytona. Uh, and then having the, uh, having the schedule compacted like it is, uh, you know, there's a lot of lot of changes, a lot of challenges, and uh, you know, it's kind of what makes uh, part of the sport uh, with the schedule, uh, the new next gen car. Uh, you know, it just makes it where it's, uh, you know, everybody's focused on how how's it going to flow, how's it going to work. Uh, so you know, it's uh, even though it's a lot different, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of excitement built around how different it is how it's going to work out, you know what I mean? And like you said earlier, uh, Tyler, that, uh, you know, it's like we got a next-gen car, new technology and all this stuff, but the product on the racetrack was just as good or the same, you know what I mean? So Speed Weeks is going to be an awesome week, and it's going to be filled with uh, with happiness and, and sadness and, you know, defeats and uh, agony of defeat feats and, and you know and all kinds of drama that, that Daytona brings but you know the challenge is to see how all the teams and, and everybody navigates this new uh, you know this new practice session qualifying and, and how it's all going to be it's going to be all new for a lot of people yeah yeah certainly will be new for 
uh, a lot of people. Uh, Dominic, uh, when we roll into Daytona and uh, hit the track on uh, Wednesday, what uh, what are your expectations? Uh, th- this this car and the racing is going to be a whole lot different than uh, what we saw at the Clash last weekend, uh, where the cars weren't even getting to 100 miles an hour, and, and it's the total opposite. Foot's not even going to be off the accelerator. Absolutely. Man, you bring up a great point. I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, though, and I'm sure a lot of the race fans who have been waiting to go to Daytona are going to be looking forward to the most, the sounds. Those cars are going to be a lot louder, and I'm looking forward to that. A buddy who's a photographer in the sport, and he was telling me, he goes, if you're planning on shooting photos this year, you better make sure to wear extra hearing protection. Those cup cars are a lot louder when they're on the racetrack. <laughs> Remember when we were told, too, that NASCAR was looking at possibly – reducing the noise uh, that didn't happen i love david the roar of this next gen car i mean it sounds like you know a, a car that's ready to street race or something dude you know hey ever since you guys were babies and i was a baby hearing a freaking v8 engine or any kind of race motor crank up hearing that thing roar I mean, that, I don't, I hate, you know, it turns me on, dude. <laughs> I, mean, that, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, hey, I'm sports you know, boy. Hey, dude, you want to get my heart beating or, you know, have the hair stand up on my arms? I mean, dude, it don't get any better than that. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, I was unaware of that, Tyler and Dominic, that, uh, that, you know, NASCAR thought about maybe running mufflers because, man, it wouldn't be the same, and uh, and knowing these cup cars are louder, man. That's that. I think that just makes it more exciting, and and you know, it's just hey, that's it's race cars, dude. It's uh, it's exhaust, it's headers, it's loud, you know, and and that's the thrill of any kind of racing, you know. So uh, yeah, I think thank you NASCAR for not putting mufflers on any race car, and. Uh, and I think it's awesome that the cars are going to be louder. I think it's going to be wonderful. I want I want people all over America to hear the Daytona 500. You know what I mean? And and uh, you know, and hopefully that entices them to come to a, a, a racetrack near them, whether it's a short track or a NASCAR race somewhere. You know, so uh, I'm just I'm excited about all of it. And uh, and thank God these cars are louder. I, I love the, the the racing noise and the, the, and, and all of it. Oh yeah, David. Are you like me? Do you like the smell of gasoline too? <laughs> dude, I love, I love it all, dude. I, I love the smell of, you know, of, of the burning rubber, uh, the oil, the gas, all of it, man. I mean, hell, I wish there was some way we could bottle that up in a perfume because I'd spray it on me every morning. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> My wife would probably kick me out of the house, but you know, it's uh. You know, we just, I just, it's a great smell to me. You know what I mean? It just, uh, y'all know how it is, man. I love it. Y'all, I love that smell. That I know y'all do too, man. <laughs> Dominic, Dominic, you remember growing smell. up, the, the school bus drive by and, you know, the exhaust pipe be out and like, that you'd just stop and be like, that smells good. So I never rode the bus to school, but I do recall the smells here and there and like a Greyhound <laughs> bus. And I got to say too, David, I mean, yeah, those smells are just something else. Uh, I remember you saying on a previous podcast, too, you wouldn't bathe in PJ1, so we can count that out of the equation, but <laughs> the other stuff. But, hey, you know, it's, it goes back when I was a kid and my dad was involved in racing with Vita Fresh Orange Juice at Meyer Speedway. And, you know, I don't know how many of these events y'all been to, but, man, a half-mile asphalt racetrack, when the races were over and, you know, they blocked off uh, the front straightaway and they had about 20 destruction derby cars. And man, made the last car that can roll and crank up, roll around, win. And man, just the smell of freaking burning rubber. And, and, uh, I, I, I just, you know, I, I don't really tell many people this because they probably think, man, that that guy's sick, you know, but man, there's nothing better than burning rubber, the smell of burning rubber. You know, I mean, I just, I love that, you know, and the smell of gasoline and, Racing oil and a race engine after it's been running for 500 miles. It's it's awesome. <laughs> oh, I love yeah. it. That's great. Yeah. A couple more yeah. things before we uh, wrap up today's show. Let's go ahead and get to our news and notes segment. Dominic, what's going on in the uh, racing world? We all like returns, I think. We all like some comebacks. How about some comebacks for Trevor Bain and David Reagan, respectively? Trevor Bain was announced on Monday, February 9th, that he would be returning to the driver's seat, or rather, 
Tuesday, February 19th, you return to the driver's seat in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Bain, the 2011 Daytona 500 winner and a two-time Xfinity Series winner, will take the seat in the number 18 Toyota Camry for Toyota Supra, rather, for Joe Gibbs Racing. He'll make his first start scheduled at Phoenix Raceway, followed by some starts at Charlotte, Nashville, New Hampshire, Las Vegas, and Homestead. Jason Ratcliffe will serve as the crew chief, and additional drivers for that role will be served at another date. And David Reagan has announced he will not only be running the Daytona 500 for Rick Ware Racing, but all Daytona races, potentially a short track, and Atlanta in March. So much for retirement for uh, both these guys who retired young, essentially. Let's start out with Trevor Bain, David, uh, the former Daytona 500 champion. He's proven before he's capable of winning in the Xfinity Series. You give him seven races and a Joe Gibbs racing there, no reason to think that he can't compete. Dude, any driver would take that to get in a Joe Gibbs racing car. I mean, I mean, if you look at the record books the last two, three years in the in the Xfinity series, I mean, they're they're I mean, I don't know what the record is, but man, they their cars, they got winning cars almost every weekend. Uh and man, I'm so glad to see Trevor Bain come back when he retired or I don't know if he had a retirement ceremony. I don't remember. But, you know, he's way too young to retire. And, uh, you know, you hear a lot of talk. I hear Trevor Baines is just a class act, a great race car driver, a good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, I, I heard a lot of rumblings, not only in the garage, but in our, a lot of our fans that are friends of mine, you know, that he was a – one shot wonder you know he came in won the daytona 500 and that was it you know and, and and let me tell you you don't get to the to the pinnacle of any sport not being a champion you know trevor bain is one of the best race car drivers in the world to compete with with, that, with jack rouse racing for as long as he did won the daytona 500 and i'm glad to see him come back uh and not when he comes, you know, he's got seven races with Joe Gibbs racing, but man, he's going to step in, strap into a winning championship caliper organization. You know, I'd like to see Trevor Bain back into victory lane and, and see him back in the sport because uh, he's a great guy. He was great for the sport. And man, what he did, uh, that win for the Wood Brothers. I mean, that was such a heartfelt win for the Wood Brothers and for our sport. And then to see from that point on, you know, the, the next two or three years, uh, success didn't come like we thought it would be. And, you know, and there's a thousand reasons why that, that, that success didn't come at other racetracks. But, you know, I'm glad to see him have another opportunity because he deserves it. He's a great guy. So I think that's great news. Yeah, yeah, certainly is. Uh, on uh, the David Reagan front, Dominic, he has been so good at plate racing. Daytona in particular, uh, over the years, uh, for Rick Ware racing, realistically, this is about as good a driver as they could get, uh, for, for these circumstances here. I mean, uh, with his track record, uh, they should be able to run up front with David Reagan. Well, David Reagan's an accomplished super speedway racer. He won at Daytona. He won at Talladega and he's proven time and time again, David Reagan's not going to tear up equipment. He's going to be up front when it counts. When he ran his sole race in 2020, it was the Daytona 500 and the fire crash that Ryan Newman had, David Reagan finished fourth in that race. David Reagan's going to get the job done. I'd be curious to see. We know the equipment is very equal or as close to equal as we have seen in a long time. So seeing David Reagan perform at a short track or Atlanta Motor Speed where he had some good runs too back in the day, I'd be curious to see how this part-time schedule would be, kind of like a twilight year schedule, like how we saw Mark Martin do in 2012 and 2013 run up front select races brian vickers did the same in that car at michael waltrip racing who's not to say david reagan could go around up front at some of these super speeder races and maybe like atlanta or a short track we saw like you said david at the top of the show rick Ware racing looked really good at the la coliseum cody Ware had a heck of a run yeah yeah you're absolutely right about that and uh david reagan a uh, very likable guy you know first time i ever was on a racetrack was uh, one of those pace car rides, and David Reagan was my driver, and I got to interview him while we were driving around the racetrack. So I've always been a David Reagan fan since that day, and certainly would like to see him do well and and uh, compete there in uh, the Daytona 500 and these other races here. Uh, David, uh, 
D- David Reagan, one of the good guys in the sport, uh, certainly would love to see him succeed. Man, no doubt about it. You know, just think about David Reagan and, and the success he had on the super speedways. But, you know, you look at some other uh, tracks, the mile and a half tracks some short tracks, and like, like Dominic said, he's had some great runs. And, you know, and I'm excited about this next-gen car. But, you know, I think David Reagan, he was too young to retire, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's interesting because, you know, when you – you got all these powerhouse teams, Roger Penske and Joe Gibbs Racing and, you know, just on and on and on, uh, you know, and, and you're out there just fighting the grind to, to get all the great partners we all have and get the funding it takes to have the technology, the engineering and just everything it takes to have a winning team. You know, I think David Reagan has done it for so long and he's won races that he said, hey, you know, uh, maybe I'm going to step back and kind of enjoy some of the fruits of my labor, you know, and, and uh, kind of, you know, relax a little bit more than he has been in the past because being a race car driver at that level, your sponsor commitments and just, you know, you just constantly engage and trying to figure out how to get back to victory lane, uh, you know, can take a toll on you after, after years and years of doing it. But with this next gen race car and like we were talking to see Cody Ware, uh, driving for his dad, Rick Ware Racing. I mean, man, they were fast. They were passing some good race cars out there that we're not used to seeing a Rick Ware race car do. And uh, maybe this new next-gen race car to kind of kind of bring the the competition back together and kind of maybe, maybe made the best race car driver win that day or the best handling race car win. Kind of Kind of the playing field's being equal up. Maybe we'll see David Reagan back. You know, I'm sure we'll see him back into victory lane, but maybe that excites him enough to step back out of that retirement and get back in this sport because, in my opinion, he was way too young to retire in the first place. You know what I mean? So I think this next-gen car is really going to make a lot of these drivers that were chasing something that they probably thought that wasn't, uh, wasn't achievable now they see it's achievable. I can get back to victory lane or I can win a cup race. And, you know, in that saying that I'm just thinking about David Reagan, you know, I, uh, I think I heard not too long ago that we were even talking about that Greg Biffle is going to be at the Daytona 500 in a children's car, or somebody's car trying to make the Daytona 500 racing again. So, you know, I think the enthusiasm and excitement that the parody of what this next gen race car is doing is kind of equaling up the playing field. Uh, you know, you're seeing a bunch of drivers that retired in the past coming back in saying, man, I can, I can win more races. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's exciting and interesting. It's the same. same yeah. Time. yeah, it is. It is time for our ask David segment. We ask you to submit questions to us on Facebook at David Star Podcast, Twitter at Star Podcast, and by email, David Star Podcast at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and start with the first question in the inbox. This one's from Tom. Tom uh, wants to know, David, who is your pick to win the Super Bowl on Sunday between the Bengals and the Rams? Man, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> I really don't, uh, you know, I don't really have a favorite. Uh, you know, I've been so, uh, man, up until the Super Bowl, you know, watching the Kansas City play and all the games that we saw. And, man, as a foot, the NFL has been over the top excitement. You know, I don't think I've ever seen so many exciting games that we've seen the last couple, couple of weeks in the NFL. But, uh, but man, you know, I don't know. It, it's, uh, you know, I'm really surprised to see – either team in the Super Bowl, but, uh, but, uh, but man, I, you know, both of them got a good shot at it. Uh, I don't know. I, I like to see the Bengals win myself personally, but, you know, I just like to see a great Super Bowl like we've seen in the weeks past. I mean, heck, uh, man, that game be- between the, was it, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, God, which was Kansas city and, uh, and Cincinnati. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, just the games have just been unbelievable, just awesome football, you know. And uh, I just hope we see that in, uh, during the Super Bowl, what, what we've all witnessed the last two or three weeks in the NFL. 
Yeah, it's been a uh, been a lot of fun uh, this NFL playoffs for sure. And and uh, you know, Dominic, I- I'm going to ride with the LA Rams. They're getting to play in their own stadium, and they're so talented on both sides of the ball. They've been good all season long. I know Joe Burrow has had a great year, and the Bengals are playing red hot right now. But the Bengals' offensive line is not very good. They gave up more sacks than anybody in the NFL this year. And the Rams have an historic defense, in particular that defensive line led by Aaron Donald, who's a future Hall of Famer. I'm going to ride with the with the Rams 30-27. to 27. Close game, but I'll ride with the Rams. Who you got, Dom? David, I got to say, what Tyler's saying here, it sounds like he might still be a little salty from the AFC Championship game, which <laughs> you know, uh, I'll give him a little bit of credit. I'm still a little you showed salty. up with Bengal colors tonight. I sure did. Man. Yes. And I'll tell you what, my heart's with the Bengals, but my head's with the Rams. I think the Rams are going to win. They they don't have to travel. They've got the home field advantage. Tyler, I think it's fascinating how the first 53 Super Bowls, no team had played in their home stadium. And now we're getting to see this the last two Super Bowls. So that has to definitely weigh a little more on L.A. not having to travel and better preparation. Matthew Stafford has some good weapons around him. And I think we're seeing what Matthew Stafford can do when he's got the right staff. And the right people behind him. So I think the Rams do get it done, though, Tyler. You, I just still had to give you crap about your Chiefs. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, but uh, I, I love Matthew, Matthew Stafford because he's from Texas. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. You know, you know uh, he's a Texas guy. And uh, so I don't know, man. I just hope it's a great game. And we're all, you know, we, we, what we've seen the past two or three weeks in the NFL, I just hope it, uh, you know, it's a nail biter all the way down to the end, to the last second you know what i mean so what are you guys uh, but, planning for uh, your super bowl watch parties anything big going on with you guys no i don't got anything big going on i'll probably be up in santa fe watching that with felice and, and see how the game goes we'll keep it small low-key how about you guys well I, i'm gonna be here in charlotte working uh but i i can assure you that i'm gonna be tuned in to watch the super bowl i mean that's just uh some uh, that's just an event that everybody in the, in the world's probably tuned in to. And, and definitely I know all of us will be. So uh, I just think it's going to be an exciting time. And looking forward to seeing all the great commercials. And, uh, you know, and just, uh, man, it's uh, what an event it is, you know. So it's pretty cool. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'll be uh, watching with uh, some friends of mine, including uh, uh, my buddy uh, Thomas Bridges, uh, who co-hosts the Jones Report with me. He's a big Rams fan. And he's been waiting for this day for a long time. So it'll be cool to be uh, around a Rams fan and see the uh, either the emotion of winning or the agony of defeat in real time, live vicariously. So there I'm looking go. forward to that. Got another hey, question Dom, for you. Go Dominic. ahead. Yeah. Dominic. <laughs> so I think Tyler is going to have about 50 people somewhere. He's going to be commentating the whole thing. They're probably already hiring him. The t- <laughs> Tyler's going to be do- uh, commentating the, uh, the the Super Bowl for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea. Maybe, yeah, I would love to hear Tyler. The Jones cast. Like the Jones cast, Ty- yes. Tyler knows his NFL, that's for sure, man. Oh, he Ooh. does. Yeah, he's clearly the yeah. NFL expert. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. <laughs> maybe, we'll, uh, maybe we'll go live on on, uh, on Twitter or something with a live reaction in real time. You know, put a camera on me, just reacting to there everything. You, you know? There you go, man. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, I'll, I'll leave the commentary to the great ones. Uh, we get Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth on uh, NBC, and uh, it sounds like it's going to be Al Michaels' last Super Bowl of his wow. great wow. career. He's been one of the best to ever do it. Uh, Absolutely. So I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy one more round of Al Michaels doing a yes. Super Bowl. So um, another question for you. This one uh, comes from Pamela. Pamela wants to know, David, what are you – getting uh kim for valentine's day and what's the perfect valentine's day oh man that's uh uh you know that's uh you know i'm i'm gonna you know i'm, I'm gonna send her some nice roses and some candy and a nice card sweet card you know obviously uh for ever since i met kim uh I met her and was dating her uh, I've never ever spent a Valentine's Day with her because I've always, I never have. We've always been uh, in Daytona Beach, Florida, uh, racing or getting ready to race. But I've always, since I met her, have spoiled her with my love, with candy, cards, flowers, 
you know, maybe a little jewelry here and there. So I will continue to do that. Uh, but yes, uh, you know, I think all of us guys that have significant others, girlfriends, somebody special in our life, you know, that's, that's our, our time to make them feel very special. You know what I mean? And, and I, uh, and I'll, and I'll do the same. I, uh, I don't have it all figured out yet, but it'll be something special, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, all of you guys and everybody else will make uh, their wives or girlfriends or whoever, you know, it'll, it'll be a special day for them as well. So guys like Dominic that have a significant other, what advice would you give? What should Dominic and, and the guys out there be doing for their girls for Valentine's Day, David? Well, man, you know, I'm not <laughs> – you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm definitely not the love expert. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, I'm going to, I'm going to plead the fifth on that one, you know, but Hey, you know, we all, uh, we all know what we've done to our significant, our wives or girlfriends and we know what they like and dinner and, you know, just making them feel, feel special and then uh, tell them how much we love them, how much we appreciate them, you know, and it's really not hard to show or, or show that to them with some flowers or, you know, taking them to dinner or, or whatever, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm sure all the women on that day will all be happy, you know what I mean? And uh, and uh, why, why is uh, myself and, 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 uh, and Dominic the only ones that have significant others, Dominic? <laughs> no, <laughs> David, that is an excellent question. Right, Tom? <laughs> hey, uh, I, I like, hey, hey, uh, Dom, I'm committed to my job. I'm married never, to my job. Okay. Hey, we right. never, have we never seen Tyler speechless? <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong, David. Yes, it's hard to stump him. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm committed to the hustle too much. Uh, hey, I'll, I'll be, I hear you. I'll be in Nashville on Monday night, and so uh, maybe I'll find some single ladies out there, you know. <laughs> well, there you go, man. Just uh, share the love, buddy. <laughs> right. Come find me. Call me. Hit, hit yeah, me. Sure. Slide in those DMs. Um, got another one for you. Another question. Uh, this one comes from Gabe. David, what's your favorite type of music to listen to? Oh, man. That's, uh, you know, I think all of us are music buffs. We, I just, you know. You know, no matter what mood we're in, we, you know, music just, um, you know, I like it all, you know, uh, people that really know me know I like my classic country music, you know, Conway Twitty, uh, you know, just old classic uh, country music, you know, but I like, I like my classic rock and roll, uh, you know, if you could hear my Spotify and hear all the different types of music I have, you'd be, you'd be shocked, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I like a little rap music, uh, you know, I like some Barry Manilow and, uh, you know, it just, I like it all, you know what I mean? Just depends on what type of mood I'm, uh, mood I'm in, uh, as to what type of music I listen to, you know, but, but on a consistent basis, uh, you know, if you jumped in one of my vehicles, you would find the radio station would be on country, you know, so absolutely. If it's Spotify, Dominic, I'm listening to Joe Rogan. <laughs> there you go. Yes, we're Neil Diamond, right? Or Neil there Young? You go. Yeah, no Neil yeah. Young. No, Neil <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I'm with you, Dave. I think consistently, you know, if there's one genre I'd list, it would be country, but it would be classic rock. But I like a little bit of country. I like a little bit of rap. I've I've liked MGK's new stuff. Tyler, I know you're a fan of that too. I mean, Machine Gun Kelly. I love Machine Gun Kelly. David's yeah. probably never heard of Machine Gun Kelly. No, I haven't, you know, and, and we'll send uh, you some machine gun Kelly. All right. Uh, you know, there's some music that my boy will put on my Spotify, you know, I'm <laughs> like, what is this? You know, I've never heard of it, you know? Yeah. But, that would be your reaction to listen to machine yeah, gun Kelly. Yeah, absolutely. But man, I like it all. Sometimes I'm into, you know, see, you know, my Hispanic heritage, you know, uh, <laughs> growing up, uh, you know, uh, being, being Hispanic, half, half Hispanic, you know, we, we grew up listening to a lot of, you know, uh, uh, Hispanic music, Mexican music, however you want to. Texas tornado, you know, right, David? Yeah, you know, so, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm in my truck driving down the road and I'm switching the channels, man. I hear a good, you know, Mexican song, it's got good beat, man. Next thing you know, you know, somebody's jumping into my truck, said, dude, what are you listening to? You know, <laughs> so, they, you know, I just, I like it all, man. I think music, it's, uh, <laughs> there's something soothing and, uh, 
therapeutic about it, but man, I'm a big, me and my wife are big music buffs. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's great. Uh, I love some, some country music, uh, but not, not that pop country crap, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's gotta be some real country. Uh, you know, I, I do listen to my machine gun Kelly music from time to time. And, and, uh, you know, some classic rock and sets a little bit of everything, some rap here and there. So yeah. Uh, I, I love, uh, you know, listening to music all the time. You know, if I'm not listening, always have to be, if I'm in my car, I got to listen to something. Whether it's radio, podcast, music, something has to be on when I'm driving. So, so, so Tyler, when I jump off our podcast here, I'm going to put in my Spotify, Machine Gun Kelly. What would you call it? What What is it? Yeah, that's Machine his name, Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly. Yes. I, I got to check that out, okay? <laughs> I'll send you right now. Yeah. There you go. All right, man. <laughs> He, uh, yeah, he's got a new release out right now, uh, a new single that just came out called Emo Girl. Uh, oh, that's, that sounds like I'm going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Will David. Awesome, yeah, man. exactly. Uh, hey. On that note, we got to run. Uh, we will see you all from Daytona next week for our best week ever here from the uh, Studio Soapbox Network. This show, as well as my show, The Jones Report, will be with you live all next week from Daytona Beach, Florida. Should be a lot of fun, and uh, we're looking forward to it. As always, subscribe to the show. Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, leave us a five-star review or don't leave us one at all. And uh, follow us on Twitter, at Star Podcast, Facebook, David Star Podcast, and by email, davidstarpodcast at gmail.com. David, uh, final thoughts before we go. I'm, I'm ready uh, for the next couple of days ahead as we, we get ready for this uh, best week ever. We're going to have some big announcements coming your way as far as your plans for next year as well. Man, no doubt about it. A lot of, a lot of excitement, you know, uh, this time of year for everybody kicking off. You know, obviously Sunday, uh, the, you know, having the, the NFL Super Bowl game, exciting. That's exciting in itself. And then, you know, the next morning we get up is Valentine's Day. And then, uh, you know, get to announce my, my plans for 2020 to NASCAR season and then we're all meeting up in Daytona man kicking off the season it's just you know I, I hope everybody uh that's listening to our podcast I hope they're excited excitement and enthusiasm like we are for all the up and coming cool stuff that's gonna happen and uh but man there's a there's a lot of fun stuff gonna happen and uh man you know for me I uh you know it's uh my focus is just trying to trying to pull my uh, pull a race car into victory lane at Daytona. I've been trying for a long time and uh, it's possible for anybody to do it, but man, that's, uh, that's what's on my mind. That's what I'm thinking about. But, uh, but man, like you said, uh, Dominic Tyler, it's a, it's going to be an exciting weekend. Yeah, for sure. Dom, uh, you, you ready for Daytona here? Oh, ready as ever. This will be my fourth Daytona 500 and my first in three years. Well, who's counting, right? I'm looking forward to seeing you guys and getting out back to the racetrack, doing some live stuff with you guys, doing stuff for the racing experts, as well as stuff for the ESPN Radio Albuquerque out in New Mexico. So it should be a lot of fun. Tyler, it's going to be awesome to work alongside you again. Looking forward yes, to this. Yes, indeed. Season. Indeed. For our uh, best week ever uh, here. Hey, hey Tyler. Soapbox. Yeah. Uh, Dominic needs to hang out with us a little bit more so we can take him to more races. I can't believe I heard him say that he ain't been to the Daytona 500 in three years. What's wrong with him? <laughs> yeah, well, you know what, David? I will say I, I went to more races than Tyler last year, and I went to more races than you in 2020. <laughs> yeah, you did. Okay. <laughs> you All know, right. I'll watch, watch what I'm saying then. <laughs> Daytona in 2020 was where I went before I saw the – before the world, uh, you know, shut down. So that was the last race I went to. So maybe I'm bad luck, actually. So maybe you don't want me on the racetrack. <laughs> well, we, 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 we hope you change your luck because we don't need any bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I, I've had to come to Daytona to end the pandemic. Have to come full hey, circle. There we go. No there rain go, this time, man. okay? Right. No there rain, please. Go. Yes. That's right. That's that right. will do it for this edition of Let's Go Racing with David Starr. We'll see you back here uh, for special editions of this show on Thursday and Saturday next week, live from Daytona Beach, Florida. Put the checkered flag out on this episode. Dave Starr, Dominic Carragano, I'm Dominic Jones. Thanks so long. We'll see you next week from Daytona Beach.